Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to start going through how a rotary phase converter actually works. So if you haven't already watched, we did have a video that kind of went over how our real rotary phase converter works. We showed the idler motor, the controls, all of that. So I'll put a link to it in the description. You should watch it first. Also, we have a great video on how to run a three-phase motor with a VFD. It's also got a beautiful shaper at the end of it. You ought to watch it just for it, if anything. I'll put a link to it in the description also. Then finally, we have a video where we went through how a three-phase and a single-phase motor actually rotates, how it makes that rotating magnetic field that pulls the rotor around. Uh, so in this video, what my hope is to kind of show that without any of the magical components, you can take a three-phase motor and generate the third leg. This right here is a three-phase fan, and I have a second three-phase fan over here. Also, for the guys who have our trainers, don't try to do this exercise with your trainer. This is a very modified trainer just for this exercise. But so this one right here is going to represent the idler motor. And in that previous video, that is the motor that was mounted on the outside of my building. And then this motor over here would represent our actual load, such as a milling machine, a lathe, air compressor, or whatever you happen to be running. Mainly I've got these switches and lights and everything just so we can kind of show some indicators later in the videos. And most of these relays will have some purpose by the end. We've got, we'll show how to reverse it how to use an actual starting capacitor. But for this video, we have this run relay, which is gonna start our idler motor. And then we're gonna be using actually the reverse relay here, which is gonna start our other one. So switch one pulls this relay in, and switch two, switch to the right, will pull in this relay. And so to start with, what we want to show is the problem that our run capacitors are trying to solve. So what I have here is we have 220 single phase coming from our breaker panel. Uh, and this is the same 220 single phase that powers your stove, powers your clothes dryer, uh, your heating, your air condition, all those bigger loads that have those double pole breakers, that is 220 single phase. And I have it run to this relay right here. And so when I switch switch one, it's gonna put power on two of our legs of our three phase idler motor. Let's go ahead and switch switch one on. You can see we're not rotating. And you can probably hear a little bit of hum. And I'm not gonna run it for long because it will burn this motor up really quick. And that goes for any three phase motor that you're sitting there humming idle, it heats them up fast and it'll burn them up. So don't do that for long. But why didn't it run? First, let's take just a second to really understand that. So here is our three phase diagram from our previous video. In this case, we are gonna be, in fact, let's take this out. We're feeding 220 in on legs A and B, and we don't have any power going to C. And so when you actually start following the circuits, we have a complete circuit coming to here and coming back to here. But this C circuit, nothing about it is working. So this winding right here is not generating a magnetic field. And this winding right here is not generating a magnetic field. So similarly to what we showed in the previous video with our single phase explanation is in between these two windings here now, we're having a tug of war. It's going north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And that's why usually you can grab the motor shaft even and kind of feel it tugging a little bit and even see it oscillating. That is that tug of war going on. But once we overcome that tug of war, or mainly we get the motor rotating, it'll continue to rotate just like our single phase one did in the previous video. So if we just give this a little twirl and switch it, I didn't think about the fan making all the noise on the mic, so I got to voice over this part. So we had 212 volt coming from our household power. So that, I mean, our incoming power off of our double pole breakers, 212 volt. And then right now we're generating 323 volts on our B to C and A to C measurements, which are based off of that artificial ghost leg. Now that is just because there is no load connected to that third leg. 
if there was any load connects to it which i'm getting ready to do in a second then you'll see it drop down to more like what you see with the phase converter that doesn't have run capacitors on it all right so we switch switch three on which represents our load such as a lathe a mill uh, air compressor whatever three phase load you have and first big thing is we didn't have to manually start it and that's because this idle motor is generating that third leg the other thing is note how our a to c and b to c voltages which are those voltages based off of that ghost leg are now down so now we're showing the same 212 volts which is coming off the pole that's not likely to change but we're showing 276 volts on our a to c and our b to c which is the artificial voltage now just to pause this video for a second this is where capacitors get really tricky because everybody always wants to know hey i have a five horsepower motor what size run capacitors do i need and it's not that easy one because different motors are built different ways and just like you just saw there the voltage went down when we added this load. Well, the voltage is probably going to change some more when you add another load. You really have to have your setup running before you can determine what run capacitors you need. All right, let's hit play on this video again. I think it just smoked my motor. Uh, so a couple takeaways from that. First, that is why you need a real quality three-phase motor for your idler motor. And um, yeah. So what happened there? I guarantee you we got super hot. We are, we are scalding hot. And the reason is this really isn't designed to do this. Kind of makes me wonder how are we gonna do the rest of this video? I can't be going through motors like this. But we did get to see the main things I wanted you to see in this. So we started this motor manually and that got it rotating. And that's what your starting capacitor on a rotary phase converter does. But we had 212 volt, which is our line power, and we had 277, 277. I think that's what it was. Now that's not 277, it's in 480. That is a phase imbalance, and that is what your run capacitors are for. So the star capacitor would be to get that motor spinning. Uh, the run capacitors would be to balance that. And we may have to get, I may have to drag a bigger motor in here uh, to do that. I kind of liked this one because it was quiet and you could see everything. Uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters who now obviously bought this fan motor for me. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about being a Patreon supporter so we can burn up more parts, uh, see the link in the description. Till next time. All right, so some of my good news is I went ahead and took this thing apart and found out there's nothing wrong with this motor. Uh, it has a thermal switch in it and this is really not a good idler, but I think it is a really good setup for us to really learn how the capacitors and everything work. But I've already taken it down for the day, so we're not going to continue on. So that's still going to be the end of the video. And we'll come back and talk about start capacitors for getting the idler motor running and run capacitors for balancing those phases where we had, what, 218, 277, 277. Just to get them closer to like 240, 240, 240. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.